Hello to the last part of chapter 16 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville. And this chapter is titled The Ship. And I'll start a couple of sentences before I stop the last time. Captain Pallack, said I, I have a friend with me who wants to ship too. Shall I, shall I bring him down tomorrow? To be sure, said Pallack. Fetch him along and we'll look at him. What lay does he want, groaned Bildad, glancing up from the book in which he had again been burying himself. Uh, never thee mind about that, Bildad, said Pallack. Has he ever wailed it any? Turning to me. Killed more whales than I can count, Captain Pallack. Well, bring him along then. And after signing off, the papers, I went, nothing doubting but that I had done a good morning's work and that the Peacock was the identical ship that Yojo had provided to carry Queequeg and me round the Cape. But I had not proceeded far when I began to bethink me that the captain with whom I was to sail yet remained unseen by me, though indeed in many cases a whale ship will be completely fitting out fitted out, and receive all her crew on board, ere the captain makes himself visible by arriving to take command. For sometimes these voyages are so prolonged, and the shore intervals at home so exceedingly brief, that if the captain have a family, or any absorbing concernment of that sort, he does not trouble himself much about his ship in port, but leaves her to the owners till all is ready for sea. However, it is always as well to have a look at him before irrevocably committing yourself into his hands. Turning back, I accosted Captain Pallack, inquiring where Captain Ahab was to be found. And what dost thou want of Captain Ahab? Is all right enough? Thou art shipped. Yes, but I should like to see him. But I don't think thou wilt be able to at present. I don't know exactly what's the matter with him, but he keeps close inside the house. A sort of sick. And yet, he don't look so. In fact, he ain't sick. But no, he isn't well either. Anyhow, young man, he won't always see me, so I don't suppose he will thee. He's a queer man, Captain Ahab. So some think, but a good one. Oh, Thou'lt like him well enough, no fear, no fear. He's a grand, ungodly, godlike man, Captain Ahab doesn't speak much. But when he does speak, then you may well listen. Mark ye, before warned, Ahab's above the common. Ahab's been in colleges, as well as among the cannibals. Been used to deeper wonders than the waves fixed his fiery lance in mightier, stranger foes than whales. His lance, eh, the keenest and the surest that out of all our isle. Oh, he ain't Captain Bildad. No, he ain't Captain Pallack. He's Ahab, boy. And Ahab of old, thou knowest, was a crowned king. And a very vile one. When that wicked king was slain, the dogs, did they not lick his blood? Come hither to me, hither, hither, said Pellick, with a significance in his eye that almost startled me. Look ye, lad, never say that on board the Peacock, never say it anywhere. Captain Ahab did not name himself. "'Twas a foolish, ignorant whim of his crazy widowed mother "'who died when he was only twelve months old. "'And yet the old squaw artistic at Gayhead said "'that the name would somehow prove prophetic. "'And perhaps other fools like her may tell thee the same. "'I wish to warn thee. "'It's a lie. "'I know Captain Ahab well. "'I've sailed with him as mate years ago.' I know what he is, a good man, not a pious good man like Bildad, but a swearing good man, something like me. <laughs> Only there's a good deal more of him. Aye, aye, I know that he was never very jolly, and I know that on the passage home he was a little out of his mind for a spell. 
but it was the sharp shooting pains in his bleeding stump that brought that bout, as anyone might see. I know, too, that ever since he lost his leg last voyage by that accursed whale, he's been a kind of moody, desperate moody, and savage sometimes, but that will all pass off. And once for all, let me tell thee and assure thee, young man, it's better to sail with a moody good captain than a laughing bad one. So, goodbye to thee, and wrong not Captain Ahab, because he happens to have a wicked name. Besides, my boy, he has a wife, not three voyages wedded, a sweet resigned girl, think of that. By that sweet girl, that old man had a child. Hold ye then, there can be any utter hopeless harm in Ahab? No, no, my lad, stricken, blasted. If he be, Ahab has his humanities. As I walked away, I was full of thoughtfulness. What had been incidentally revealed to me of Captain Ahab filled me with a certain wild vagueness of painfulness concerning him. And somehow, at the time, I felt a sympathy and a sorrow for him, but for I don't know what, unless it was the cruel loss of his leg. And yet, I also felt a strange awe of him. But that sort of awe, which I cannot at all describe, was not exactly awe. I do not know what it was, but I felt it, and it did not discline me towards him. Though I felt impatience, at what seemed like mystery in him so imperfectly as he was known to me then. However, my thoughts were at length carried in other directions, so that for the present dark Ahab slipped my mind. So, that was chapter 16. Bye-bye till chapter 17.